is a man who certainly needs no introduction. But then again, this is a roast. And introduction is certainly in order. He's been Toastmasters Man of the Year. He's been the MC at numerous Toastmasters conferences. He's brought in some of the best guest speakers our conferences have ever seen. So what better way to break the ice and kick off our roast of the great Shrini than the great Jerry Evans. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Roastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and Roasters. I first met Srini at the Palatine Toastmasters Club. And when I met Srini, he had this knack for telling these stories. Now, some of you may or may not have heard some of his stories, but he was always talking about these donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> and it just brought to mind whether or not he was talking about like Dominic the donkey, like you know, in that Christmas song, Dominic the donkey. So Srini relate these stories about these donkeys all the time. And the members of Palatine Toastmasters Club, they would just kind of sit there kind of like puzzled and go, okay, Srini, <laughs> sure, Srini. <laughs> and he never quite explained what the parable of the story was. He never kind of ended with a moral to the story. He knew what the moral was, but all the other members of the Toastmasters Club, they had no idea what the moral of the story was. As I got to know Srini, and he was talking about becoming an officer in the various clubs, and at that time, for those of you again who may know Srini, he was going around to probably six or ten clubs a day, or at least that's what it appeared to be. And I wonder, what does this man do? <laughs> He's never, you know, and everybody would ask me, so Jerry, is that his full-time occupation? <laughs> I said, you know, I really have no idea because he never really explained what he does during the daytime. And then we joined another club together, which is Toastmasters on Purpose. But before that, he taught me the art of chartering a club. So we chartered this club called All State Wheeling, up in Wheeling. And he said, well, Jerry, he said, we're going to set them up. They're going to have two meetings. They're going to have one during the daytime, and he says, we're going to have another meeting at nighttime. I'm thinking, okay, 7 o'clock, right? Most evening meetings. No, they were going to be at 9.30 at night. <laughs> so he and I would go to Harper College, attend a club there, and then we'd make a beeline to Wheeling like crazy, didn't we, Srini? And all of a sudden, at 9.30 at night, we were holding a Toastmaster meeting, at Allstate on Wheeling Road in Wheeling. He and I would finish the meeting about, oh, probably around 10, 45 or so. And we'd say, well, let's just go out and have a quick chat. So then we'd go to our favorite restaurant, not Shrini's. <laughs> we'd go to Denny's. <laughs> so we'd go to Denny's, and then at that time, Greg Vogt, who happened to be a division governor, he would go with us. So he and I and Greg would sit there for sometimes two and a half to three hours kind of, you know, kind of recapping what happened during the meeting and everything else. And next thing you know, we wind up sitting there until about 1.45 in the morning. Yeah. And we did that repeatedly through multiple meetings all the time. So then fast forward, so then I thought, okay, he's tired of going to Denny's. So then he said, Jerry, let me introduce you to my favorite restaurant. And he says, call the Pita Inn. <laughs> so we would go to the Pita Inn in Wheeling. And he said, now let me introduce you to my second favorite restaurant, the Pita House <laughs> in Schoenberg. <laughs> and I was always amazed that people couldn't really correctly pronounce Srini's name. And to this day, a lot of people can't pronounce his name. And so I remember one time he was explaining to people, this is how you pronounce my name. Think of Shri, almost like three, and then Ni. So he'd say, Shri, Ni, Sayanini. <laughs> and I've heard people call him every other name except Srinivas Sayanini. On a serious note, Srini has been a friend to me since I started in Toastmasters. He was there to support me from almost day one, and he's been there ever since. And he's encouraged me, I've admired him, he's inspired me, because in spite of some of the silly stories he may have told, some of them didn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> 
But I saw his dedication, his commitment to Toastmasters, and his heart and soul into this organization. And after three years and nine months later, I've seen his evolution as a Toastmaster, as a leader, and he still continues to do that today. And Srini, I still admire you, and I still inspire you as a Toastmaster, and I consider not only you a friend, but also I look forward to our relationship and your leadership continuing in the future. So thank you very much tonight for the opportunity to roast you and also to celebrate you. Srini. Thanks, Jerry. And don't feel so all alone. When I first met Srini, I think a couple years ago, and they first mentioned his name, I didn't have a clue either. I just kind of dumbfounded. Like, <laughs> but I finally learned over two years, Srini must say, great guy. Great guy, buddy. Great name. <laughs> Our next roaster certainly knows her way around numbers. She's a data aficionado, works her dream job as a metrics analyst. And one of the first things she ever said to Srinivas when she met him was, nice to meet you. You don't know me yet, but you will. <laughs> <laughs> and Srini thanks his lucky stars to this day that their paths had crossed. You see, she's great at numbers. And someone told me Srini is pretty good at cooking. <laughs> So if there's anyone Shree can count on to help him cook the books <laughs> <laughs> to make our district distinguished, <laughs> she can. Please help me welcome Linda Heidenberg. Heidenberg. <laughs> When Steve Servi first sent out the call to all Toastmasters saying, would you like to roast your district governor? My immediate response was, why, yes, I would. <laughs> and I couldn't wait to respond to him, and I did, and I thought, game on. There's a few things about Srinivas I'd like to share with you, and you may not know. And it may even surprise you. Srinivas is a man of many and varied interests. <coughs> Few of which are fashion, education, and the arts. Fashion, you say? Well, look at the man. <laughs> perfectly coiffed from head to toe, from his perfectly coiffed hair to the tip of his fashionable shoes, always polished. But there's a little chink in the armor along the way. And it's right around the neck. When I saw Srinivas last night, he was wearing a tie, and I knew that Michael Notara's visit was a momentous thing. <laughs> <laughs> it will go down in the history books forever. Srinivas, much like Bill Gates, also supports education, but in a little bit of a different way. And I got the goods to back that up. I am currently working on manual number 24 in the last six years. And Srinivas has been very supportive of that, particularly last year as Elgat. Go get them, Linda. In fact, Srinivas is so supportive of education, he supports the district handing out free manuals this year to AGs and DGs as motivational tools. And it's genius. Want to know why? Because not only is it a motivational tool, but every one of those manuals is going to go out there and it's going to come back filled out and it's going to be an award for the district. And a bell's going to ring, and an Elgat's going to get her wings. Cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> Brilliant. I admire that. Finally, the art. Note, I did not say arts, as in classical music and Van Gogh paintings. I mean the art. The art of persuasion. <laughs> Srinivas has this weird, bizarre sixth sense. He is in a room full of 300 Toastmasters. He can sniff out the new ones who are ready and willing to be leaders. <laughs> Zero in on them, and he'll make a beeline for them. They're, they're toast. <laughs> I have known 
months to Nevada, so only a few months, and he cornered me at a conference. And you'd think being cornered would be uncomfortable conversation, but it wasn't. It was probably the most fascinating conversation I'll ever have, because it is the closest I've been in my life to being in a conversation with a Jedi Master. <laughs> yes, a Jedi Master. At some point in the conversation, Srinivas said, you will be an area er 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 governor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't long after that, and he pulled the Jedi move out again. You'd be great, wonderful, division governor. Put the Jedi <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so you'd think after all this, he has no life outside of Toastmasters. What he does, Srinivas is a successful professional person with AT&T. He's earned his PMP tough certification to earn, and he's worked very hard to climb the corporate ladder. But then I started thinking, wait a minute. Srinivas has had designs on district leadership for a long time. <laughs> And I wouldn't be surprised if he worked his fingers to the bone and climbed that ladder because he knew that down the road when he was district governor, he would have a free venue for the deck meetings. Yeah. Way to go. Creative <laughs> thinking, that's right. <laughs> I'm going to close with a word to the wise, especially for those of you who are newer in the organization. If you are in a large room of 300 people and Srinivas is on the other side of the room, and he does this, and he starts heading for you, run and hide. <laughs> because if he gets you cornered, and he pulls out that Jedi move, you are toast. <laughs> Shinobas, it's been an honor and a privilege to serve with you. Thank you. <laughs>
what he did best as a newbie to the chapter dinner meetings. He basically shook everyone's hand, introduced himself. Of course, nobody could pronounce his <laughs> but everybody loved him right away he, because he was very likable and because of that he was very likable and he had good speaking networking skills and leadership skills he became a director right away almost the same year yes training bass i know of course, we all heard how he was giving his speeches about the donkeys. <laughs> and I heard it three times. <laughs> and sometimes it's a different story with a different ending. <laughs> so he's putting a new twist to the story, making it more interesting. But what I was wanted, what I was wanted to tell you about is how Srinivas gives his speeches. This guy can give five to 10 minutes speech with his fingers glued together all the way through the <laughs> He do not. Pay attention. This guy has a very smooth, nice, white grin, just like he was airing out his mouth from the curry flavor. <laughs> and this guy has impeccable style with black suits and brown like 45 size suits you know like the boss of the clowns <laughs> but most of all this guy is all about leadership and recognition and what I what I want to tell you is we together chartered new club and what I mean by that is, I ask him so many times, let's start this club. You know, it's going to be great. Project managers will love it because we're all about speaking, about leadership, networking skills. Let's start it up. And we did. And with this guy's help, we chartered the club in February. And the way the work was, the first meeting was last April. <laughs> The next meeting was in September, and this is the first two meetings that Srinivas attended, and the rest of them I won. <laughs> but he got the credit. <laughs> but I love him as much as a human being can. Love another guy. <laughs> <laughs> For that, I wanted to hand him in an award. Wow. Well, yeah, we've made a good award. Yes, there is an award. For Srinivas Rose Inani, District 30 Governor 2011 2012, friend, mentor, and leader. Thanks, Andrew. But I've heard it mentioned a couple times tonight about the donkey story. I must admit that. I must be the only Toastmaster who has not heard <laughs> of the story. And I'm oh, very grateful for that. Yeah. <laughs> Our next speaker certainly has the gift for the theatrical and has an uncanny ability to memorize his audience. I'm sorry, mesmerize his audience. <laughs> <laughs> he uses vocal variety and gestures in his storytelling like a snake charmer uses his flute. To put everyone at ease and get his message across, here to work his magic to see if it's at all possible to charm Srini, please help me welcome Robert Carrington. <laughs> To 
Tonight, we honor Trini for his accomplishments as our DG. I had the fortune to be selected to volunteer as the deck secretary. As you notice, I don't have pretty legs. I don't know why he picked me. But this gave me a great viewpoint of the inner workings of the trio and the deck and to be mentored by the DG in leadership and service. Even though it seems on my first meeting, I had to sign this 20 page notarized confidentiality form by Srini <laughs> before taking the job so that I wouldn't divulge the secret. I can tell you this without violating my oath and promise. The death was not the model for the Hunger Games book or movie. <laughs> <laughs> when Srini was, was elected DG, he did not start outsourcing District 30 to India. <laughs> Volunteers under him get paid so low, outsourcing was out of the question. <laughs> Instead, Srini taught me these three things. I think he learned them from Ronald Reagan. Great mentors you need to surround yourself by, with, like Bob, and Kyle, and Hugh, and even Dittmar. And then you pull in some great leaders. If you do this, the secret is others will not even notice when you've lost your mind. <laughs> if they ever turn and look at you, all you need to do is smile. <laughs> when you have such strong leaders, Srinivas learn to say those magic words. Yes, Joan. Yeah, yes, Michelle. I'm here to serve. <laughs> Some perceive this leadership style of his as being laid back. <laughs> How many of you have seen the commercial for the Nationwide Insurance Guy where he has this disappearing deductible and he's laying back? <laughs> Srini puts that salesman to shame! <laughs> How does he get all that District 30? to step forward. Something gets a smile. When I first thought of roasting Srini, I was going to show you all the pictures from my video cameras that I've taken during the deck meetings <laughs> of Srini's different faces <laughs> during the deck meeting. There's that perplexed look. <laughs> His where is this going look. <laughs> His humble look when technology doesn't quite do what he thinks it's supposed to do. But Srinivas outsmarted me. He has branded his smile. Can you believe it? No one can show his face without that smile showing him as a warm, friendly, lovable guy. That's his brand. When Srinivas asks you to take on a task, even the impossible, you say yes, as evidenced by others that preceded me. Srinivas' real secret, though, is delegate, delegate, and delegate. <laughs> Empower others to do what you need voluntarily. <laughs> right, voluntarily. Knowing the custom of his native country, we were surprised to see him go back home to India rather than delegate the job to a matchmaker. <laughs> Being convinced 
And showing real leadership skill is how he gets those important things done. So Kyle, this is where the mentor could probably learn from the mentee. <laughs> Discussions. Shrini looks at each person and sees their potential. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows the cream in the milk always rises to the top. Mm -hmm. But Shrini does not overlook anyone. Shrini even looks at the shorter people. <laughs> <laughs> Look where our new Division Governor Ethel Gautier and Division Governor Jane Sengenels have helped District 30. Very good choices. Everyone needs ground troops. <laughs> Especially those fireballs like those two. <laughs> so, Sri, thanks for the year of mentoring me, learning about great teams, the value of warm smiles, delegation, and if needed, re-delegation, <laughs> or lastly, doing it yourself as he's done with me a couple of times. <laughs> thank you for your assistance, and thank you for this opportunity, Trini. Thanks, Robert. And as your term as district secretary is coming to an end, remember you have signed the non-compete clubs. <laughs> <laughs> and besides Toastmasters, I'm a member of Boy Scouts, and I can't imagine working so hard getting paid so less. <coughs> Toastmasters and Boy Scouts. Now, speaking of someone who has the uncanny ability to charm anyone, our next speaker. Although petite in size, packs one heck of a wallop. You should have seen her roast our district governor last year. <laughs> wow. Never underestimate the power of a woman. At least never underestimate the power of this woman. All I can say is that I'm glad she's on my side. <laughs> Sorry, Srini, you're on your own. Please help me welcome Cleo Scott. Fellow Toastmaster, especially Srini. I became a Toastmaster in April 2010. And in July, I started being exposed to district leadership and then I meet Trini. And this is the first time, and that was the only time that I heard somebody memorize the mission. I haven't memorized the mission, but I know how to tie. So with Trini's leadership, I was volunteered to be the assistant division governor. And I was so excited to leave. But Trini said, with all his power, I cannot serve if I don't go to training. So I went to training. I did the last training in Chicago. I was so scared I would be late. I parked my car in the first parking lot I could find. And since I'm from New York, I do not know how to use the meters. So I paid, I put all the coins that I have, I put the ticket in my car and I walked. I got there, I got trained. I don't know how to get back to my car. <laughs> <laughs> that training experience taught me and ingrained into my brain that I have to go to everything. <coughs> I was an officer in my clubs since I became a Toastmaster. And every single training I attended, and every single year I attended the same office, treasurer. <laughs> because Rini said I have to train, I came back for the training over and over. 
So it's really thank you for that because education is really important. With all the speeches that I heard about Trini, I also remember the donkey story. I heard it three times also. <laughs> but I couldn't remember the details of it. All I remember is the donkey. <laughs> but what is so wonderful is from the donkey to your speech, it's either last meeting or sometime very, very current. From the donkey, you kind of gallop to a real horse. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful. I went to school in the Philippines and I studied in a Catholic school from kindergarten to my high school. And every time I see Srini, I remember my school. We pray. And Srini, you always make me pray. Every time you speak. I also learn some expressions, superlatives, that I never learned in school. It's Good, better, best. Which Rini I learned, it's wonderful, wonderful. Yes. It's beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Rini, for those wonderful superlatives that I learned. But as a leader, he empowers <coughs> us. He motivated us. And just like I learned how to tie, with his leadership, with all the pressures and the stresses you have. A true leader, when they come home, and just like how I learned to tie my tie correctly, it doesn't not up. Srini, I am <coughs> so honored to know you and to serve you. Mr. <laughs> Donkey story coming up. <laughs> Trini, why don't we make an appointment to go to Denny's or was it was it Peter Grill? <laughs> Peter <laughs> Tell me the donkey story someday. <laughs> Our next speaker is someone who probably knows Shrini better than anyone here. <laughs> Maybe even more so than his young bride. Shrini <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. roasted him last year when he was a district governor. If I remember correctly, Shrini really helped turn up the heat. <laughs> but now the tables have turned. Oh, and no. you know what they say about payback. <laughs> Please welcome our immediate past district governor, Kyle Brody. Thank you, Mr. Roastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and any honored guests that we have. Well, I was thinking of stories, and I have a whole lot of them. Lots of <laughs> us. And I was thinking, am I going to give up the real good story? Should I give up the real good stories about Srinivas, the man behind the smile? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I was thinking, you know what? Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. We'll see how this roast goes. <laughs> I was thinking about the first story. And the first story has to do with a tie that I was having, I had on. <laughs> and we were both in Connecticut. And I think you know this story, Srinivas. Mm -hmm. We were both talking in a, at the Toastmasters convention. And all of a sudden, in a very crowded room, I saw this amazingly beautiful woman. <laughs> Our eyes locked. 
she came. I, I, I was hoping to have a cough, not somebody laughing. <laughs> <laughs> eyes locked. Okay, eyes locked. She walks over towards me. My heart was racing. <laughs> And I was thinking, and I, I played it cool, because, you know, I'm Kyle. I played it cool. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course. I said, I said, hi. And she utters, hi, who's your friend? <laughs> <laughs> Ever the optimist, I say, well, OK, all right, you know what? Do you have you know, any friends? Maybe the four of us could go out? Trina grabs her hand and says, no, she doesn't. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I've always loved Srinivas's inappropriate lack of understanding <laughs> of, American, of American culture. We tend to, or at least I tend to, kind of try and caress feedback in criticism. I remember one time, Trina and I were sitting down, we were talking to us masters, and somehow the conversation got to dating women and uh, you know all the good stuff that could, <laughs> that, could, that, could come, that could come of that. I could say, you know, Trina, I just don't understand why I'm on a little bit of a cold spell here. And he said, oh, you know, Kyle, Oh, in Srinivas's very charming way that I'm not yet able to, his mannerisms I'm not yet able to master. Oh, you know, Kyle, you, you got good hair. And I'm like thinking, all right, you know, this is, this is starting off great. You know, your, 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 your face isn't that bad either. Thinking, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, this, this could split, you know. It's, 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 I, I like to compliment, you know, <laughs> bad spell, compliments, great. You know, don't know where this is going. He said, oh, if women don't want to like you, all they have to do is kind of look at your stomach and just, <laughs> 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 oh. I was like, oh. Trinivas, please. But Trinivas has always been one to put forth a lot of extra effort. Yeah, he's laughing because it's true. <laughs> I said a couple of things afterwards, but that'll, we left maybe from the <laughs> Three of us has always had a knack for picking out uh, talent. There was many times when we needed to fill roles for demo meetings or contests, agendas. And Three of us would always have those many, many people. I always wondered how he did it. And you know, I really wish I could tell people, but he never told me the, the big secret he had of being a good recruiter. It was always, all right, Kyle, we'll go to this Toastmaster meeting or Toastmaster function. We'll get the people. How, Trini, how? We'll get the people. Well, what, what can I do to help? Uh, I'll do the talking and you shut up, Kyle. And, then, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's worked out well. Since. <laughs> but thank you for all the years of dedication and hard work to this organization. Thank you for teaching me maybe a thing or two about how women view me. I don't know how you understood that. <laughs> <laughs> Never understood all the other rumors flying about us. If they only knew the kind of anger you have towards me. <laughs> you always were very... You always were very uh, supportive. <laughs> nah, actually you weren't, but you were always, <laughs> always, always very patient, always very patient. I was wondering, you know, how, how do you do this? How, how are you so patient? And then he, one day he did reveal that secret. He said, you know, Kyle, I just hear maybe one or two words and then I decide, you know, I'm just going to ignore you. And then... <laughs> And it was, it, it's, it's always been interesting since. There's been many, many years, and um, I appreciate all the work, again, that you've put in, and look forward to many more good years of service to the district. Mr. Fellow Rosenberg. Thanks, Kyle. See, the things we learned 
about people here in a row. Shrinky, I didn't realize you're such a ladies man. <laughs> no, you wouldn't, you can't imagine. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I've got many more stories. Okay. I've had one request from a fellow to do a roast. And I will grant that request as long as they follow the rules mm -hmm. to be using good judgment, integrity, and no hitting below the belt. There's Please no. welcome Tim. I come up here not knowing a lot about Srini even though I've worked with him for quite a while. <laughs> but the point of the matter is, is that the unseen influence that Srini has had, as well as other district leaders have had, on me has been incalculable. One of the unsung things that Srini has done for me personally is teach me a lot about leadership particularly sometimes when I've asked his advice on maybe two or three occasions and how to handle certain situations in the deck that have come up. I need not repeat anything here, but there has been conflict. And we ha in any large organization, there's going to be politics. There's going to be some sources of things coming in. And what Srini has done for me is show me how to stay a cool customer, how to work with people, and knowing the soft skills of tact and diplomacy. Just by watching him from afar, seeing as how he's done people, and with a little bit of that humble attitude that he's exhibited here with the district leadership, and frankly, some things I've never known before, I just want to say, Srini, thank you for being our district leader. Thank you for teaching me a few things. Even though I don't know you as well as I'd like, you know, we have worked together on some projects, but it's always been, Tim, do this, or Tim, how can I help with this? This needs to be done. Overall, it's been fun. So, as far as I'm concerned, Srini, thank you for your leadership, and anybody who takes district governorship has got a master's level course. Frankly, Srini, I think you're passing with a flying A+. plus. Thank you. Obviously, we learned about Srini's style of leadership delegation, which is a great thing for you to have. I've got one more request for a roast from, from Tom. Please welcome Tom. I was asked to keep it honest, clean. <laughs> And above the knees. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Shrini, I have always looked up to you. Oh. Oh. Outside of past governor Kyle, I think we're the only two, correct, Kyle, in the room? who heard his icebreaker? Yep. There have been icebreakers to go down in history. <laughs> Shrini gave his to go down for infinity. <laughs> <laughs> what Toastmasters constantly reminds me, meeting after meeting, speech after speech, Evaluation after evaluation, there is only one true way to become a better Toastmaster. Cross the line. Get out there. Do it. This fine young man is the next generation of Toastmasters. He is what Toastmasters will become tomorrow. He has set the stage for what today has come. He has not taken a back seat to anyone. He just follows people in their footsteps, corrects what's wrong, makes it right, 
and brings to us a perfect example of what you can do when you cross the magic line. Shakespeare told us to be or not to be. To be is behind here. This is the easy place to be. This is where people come and get comfortable. To not to be is out here. Stepping across the line, regardless if you're the Woolworth Four or a whole bunch of other people. When you step out, you take on challenges. When you step out, you get pain. Sometimes the pain has to come in order to toughen you up. When you file, when you foul behind Kyle, it is pain. Are we roasting? Are we roasting? Both are good examples and have been. It has been a pleasure to know our past governor and our future past governor as they hand it on torch by torch by torch to the next person. It's been a wonderful adventure. We'll make a good movie. <laughs> I don't know if we should call it entertainment or a reality show. Thank you for being the star of this movie. Thanks. Oh, no, no, you have to show everybody. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, John F. Kennedy once said the torch has been passed from one generation to the next. And soon you can pass a torch to the next district governor. And now. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, in keeping within the guidelines of the roast, our man of the hour gets to have the last word or the last laugh. All right. He has the privilege and honor to acknowledge and share the love with all those who have acknowledged and shared the love with him. Please help me welcome our man of the hour, our district governor, Srivas Sinidi. Thank you, Mr. Roastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. I wanted to show you this. <laughs> Some of you saw me taking notes. Some of you, I, I still have some, some people in this room fooled that think that I actually take notes. I, I don't know what I'm gonna talk about right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not any different. <laughs> Whoa, so many Good. All I wrote, is the names of the people that I'm gonna pick on. Oh. <laughs> That's all I wrote. And this is the order of the people I'm gonna be picking on. <laughs> now, I was wondering why would 25 people stay up all night <laughs> to roast me? Why would you do that? I heard a lot of love from up here. I was expecting something else. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not a, I might not look like it, <laughs> but I'm a smart man. <laughs> <Can you say that>? <laughs> <laughs> I think what's happening here is a celebration of my Toastmasters journey ending. <laughs> <laughs> because when you put two and two together, if you came here at seven o'clock in the morning, there is no reason for you to show all this love. 
right? Even when a, even when somebody gets a death sentence, you get the last meal, right? Right, Mr. Roastmaster? That's correct. <laughs> now I have all, all figured out. But I'm, I'm looking at some serious faces. Some, you're not buying it. This is, this is becoming one of my stories that I tell and nobody gets it except me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That's right. And I always wondered about it. Why does that happen to me? <laughs> Just me. So let's start with Jerry Evans. So why doesn't Jerry get my stories? <laughs> now Jerry was my, he is a very close friend of mine, my lunch buddy at Peter in Peter House. <laughs> but Jerry loves Toastmasters. And he's always, he always comes up with creative ideas. He's always building bridges to the future, right? <laughs> building bridges to the future. One of his newest twists that he came up with, and you gotta love Jerry for this. Around the world in 80 days, how many of you heard it? J Jerry wants to do around the two, around District 30 in 80 days. <laughs> so now I know Jerry, when, when I'm giving a speech, what you're thinking of. You're thinking about the next tagline that would impress people, right Jerry? <laughs> Right, sure. No, it's not like that. Again, folks, this is supposed to be a roast. I was hoping to bleed today when I went back home, but you have not made, made, made me bleed, so I'm going to make some of you pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be me. I don't think I, I got Jerry yet. Linda. Uh oh. <laughs> so you talked about the first time we met, and I wanted you to be an Eric Governor. Now, Linda, from the time I've known her, does not drive. But Linda was in four clubs before I was in four clubs. <laughs> <laughs> and Linda can send emails which can fill your inbox if you don't look at them. <laughs> Andrew's over there nodding. <laughs> He's crying. And also, Linda loves details. She really loves details. You give her a problem, she'll tell you what is the root cause of it. <laughs> Unless she caused it herself. <laughs> but Linda and Jerry, Thank you so much for your, for your love that you showed me from the stage. I have a lot of sh stories to share about you, but that's for another, because I have other people to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Soswa, my Polish buddy. Now, Andrew loves volunteering. Wherever you go, whichever organization you go, Andrew wants to volunteer. And I, I always wonder why he does that. I don't get it. <laughs> 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 Why do you volunteer, Andrew? Do you know? Because it's in my heart. I believe you. Only because he gave me that wonderful plaque. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years working with you, now I know why you... Thank you, Andrew, for that wonderful plaque. Now the next person I'm going to talk about is Mr. Robert Harrington. <laughs> wow, that was a roast. <laughs> that was a real roast. Delegate, delegate, delegate. And he, more, nobody else knows more. More, nobody else has been on the receiving end like Robert has been. Thirty minutes before the meeting, I would ask him to make. 400 copies <laughs> of the deck packet <laughs> by sending him the wrong files. <laughs> <laughs> and poor Robert brings those. And then 
The reason I do it is because if something goes wrong, I know who to blame. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but Robert, thank you for he should get the roast of the day award. <laughs> Cleo Scott. The one thing I remember about Cleo is I don't think she remembers the first time she saw me. I loved her story when she came up here. She always comes up with creative stories. The first time I saw her was at a TLR. I gave an opening session about clock coaches. Cleo was there. Then I went to my next next session. I gave uh, I was a presenter for weekly membership. Cleo was there. And then I gave another session. I love I love to talk, right? So I, I, I gave another I session and Cleo was there. I was honored. So next time I saw, wow. I am honored. There's at least one person on this lonely planet that thinks what I say makes sense. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and next time I go to Cleo and she's there with her warm hug. And Cleo also loves hugging. I think she wants to be the world's big, best hugger. <laughs> so if you get near Cleo, she always wants to hug. And she gave me this warm hug. And I was, I was wondering, wow. She, she, she gets inspired by me, she hugs me, I must be really a special person. So I asked Cleo, why did you come to my session uh, three times in a row? I was hoping that you would say, you're a great presenter. <laughs> <laughs> she said, uh, I was at the TLI and I wanted to check out each session. I wanted to check out each session. <laughs> You don't get it, do you? <laughs> so, no, I was just a that. part of her plan. <laughs> Thank you, Cleo, for making me feel special. <laughs> Pulling me down. But Cleo, thank you so much. Now, we are getting to the meat and potatoes of this roast session. <laughs> the next person that roasted me was uh, my close friend, Mr. Kyle Rory. Skip Kyle! <laughs> Linda, everybody's got to get it, come on. And then Robert Harrington yeah. mentioned things about mm -hmm. him being a mentor to me, because some people can see through me. And Robert is one of those, he always gives me fatherly advice, which I take. When I take it, it works. When I don't take it, it does not work. <laughs> but, but he did mention that Kyle was my mentor. Now the way, and it is a mentor-mentee relationship. I'm the mentee, he's a mentor. He teaches me how not to do things. <laughs> And I was nice to you, Shreem. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I told him the story and about the talk, tie. And, and you taught me how not to be nice. <laughs> no, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. So now, now that Kyle is all in a pissy mood. <laughs> let's... I've had worse, Shreem. You know it. <laughs> a lot worse. Yes. I still have some more stories, and that story about the woman is true. <laughs> <laughs> and it's obvious, right? But really, I, want, I, can, I can tell you that if not for Kai, spending that, spending that time with me during my initial phases of Toastmasters, Leave alone district governor, I wouldn't even be a club officer. Uh, I shared my story about, in, in the opening session of Toastmasters, I, 
of our district conference, I shared a story about how I got, how I ran an election to become the vice president of education. I got three votes. <laughs> my opponent got 47 votes. One vote was myself. <laughs> One vote was a friend of mine that I go to lunch every day. The other vote was Kyle Rohde. <laughs> <laughs> And Kyle took me under his wing, and he, he Kyle has a way of uh, way of dealing with people. Yeah. It has to be the Italian thing. So, <laughs> so <laughs> again, we don't understand. <laughs> so Kyle wrote in his true mafia style, invited me to rescue. <laughs> it's <that> inappropriate. <laughs> it's sitting under the belt, but he. He told it like it is, hey, I know you have the talent, but do other people see you the way you want them to see you? And he helped me with taking me to a club, giving me that personal attention, and taking me to Palatine Toastmasters. I also remember my first area visit as an area governor, and he was a division governor, and I was his area governor. He took me to the first area visit of my life. I went there and I was asked a simple question, a simple question about what do you enjoy about being an area governor? <laughs> and I just bombed out, bombed out. I was an area governor, newly appointed area governor, but Kyle was there for me. So Kyle, <laughs> it's, it's not all bad. <laughs> it's not all bad. <laughs> Tip Bolger. I was expecting at least something from you, Tim. <laughs> now, Tim is a wonderful person. He, he, he has always helped me. When I was a division governor, he would always show up and ask me, for, ask me if I needed something. I was like, I would always be doing a zillion things. So I'm like, Tim, yeah, can, can you wait, Tim? But he was always patient with me. But I was hoping you'd come up here and say, say things that you mean about me. <laughs> <laughs> now I got Tim all upset. But I know Tim is a wonderful, wonderful, Toastmaster and a great speaker. All he needs to do. <laughs> yeah, it's getting no. Uh, it's getting, uh, getting it's button up, button up, <laughs> okay, right? Okay. Button up. <laughs> yeah. It's getting real at that moment. I yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Button up. Now, Toastmasters has been a wonderful, wonderful organization for me. All of you, I've spent the last seven years with Toastmasters around me. I forgot that I have a real family now, and I have to start a family of my own. But, but I've truly enjoyed this experience. And someday, and someday, in my future in Toastmasters, I'll come up with content that actually makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that, I want to, I want to, I would be remiss if I didn't roast our Roastmaster. Mr. Roastmaster. So I remember uh, Steve Surrey, he was a division governor when I was ADF governor. And Steve Survey could have been anything in Toastmasters. Anything in Toastmasters. So when, it, when he was division governor, a lot of people asked him if he wanted to be lieutenant governor of marketing. And then I was an area governor. I wanted to know why Steve was not an area governor. So Steve is not what he looks like. Check <laughs> out the mess. 
Go ahead, take off your mask. Take off the mask. <laughs> I'm dressed. Steve is a smart man. <laughs> Steve is a smart man. <laughs> he knew, he knew that being a Linda and Governor of Marketing was a lot of work. There are better things to do in life. He, he, do, he does, he, he does the scout thing, he's board member for the, uh, the scout, Boy Scouts group for special, special needs kids. And he makes a difference in lives every day, but is also very smart. He wants to, he wants other people to do the work so he can come and roast them, <laughs> right? He wanted to make a living of roasting district governors. <laughs> He's doing a good job. Because he <laughs> has made very much so far. <laughs> so he, he tried this in banquets. Now he has reached out to the Toastmasters International District 30 conference. And I know he has plans, bigger plans. He wants to be the Roastmaster for all of Toastmasters in the world. He wants to take this to the Toastmasters International convention, don't you? You bet. <laughs> and the last one is Mr. Eric Feinendegan. <laughs> Now, Eric Feinendegan is a wonderful human being, a great communicator. But the first time I saw him was in a contest. He came up here, gave this wonderful, wonderful speech. And I was not sleeping. <laughs> I wanted to be him, right? So I go and I said, hey, Eric, great job. My name is Srinivas Saineni. <laughs> so next time, and he, Eric Feinendegan is somebody who, when you go and shake his hands, uh, he's a very convivial guy. Uh, his, his, he comes off as your buddy, right? So the next time I go there, I'm like, hey, Eric, how, you, how are you doing? Eric was like, <laughs> but again, I saw Eric again in another contest. Some people are looking at the door, and that's the plan. <laughs> Eric, I saw Eric multiple times again at contests, and he was he would always make he would always be the very good speaker, but he would just fall. A little shot. Second place winner. Second place winner. Second place winner. But he, he's the one that gives other people hope. Mm -hmm. Right, Eric? Like like I try. Sure. You, you, you I try. try. And this is, this is the time where I'm not making sense again. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. You and me, baby. You and me. I get them. So, I so one of the things I love about Toastmasters is uh, I was sitting there listening to all of this stuff, uh, trying trying to show that I was taking notes. But I knew one thing: as Toastmasters, you're too nice. No matter what I say from here, you're gonna listen to me, <laughs> right? And yes. forget all about it, <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster. I'm also going to stand in relation to that. It's because the speech is done! <laughs> I know. I want to say congratulations. Thank you for being our man of the hour. Thank you for allowing us to roast you. Before you go, Jerry, you want to come up? We have a certificate to get to training. Basically, it says there are many things we can say about him that he's modest, kind, bright, and polite. They'd all be lies, <laughs> but we could say them. <laughs> it's fitting that every outgoing district governor that we recognize our district governor. And on behalf of District 30 and all of the members of District 30,
Oh. We want to recognize Srinivas Sayanidhi, District 30, by the 2012 Spring Conference Committee, and all of us District 30 Toastmasters, in appreciation for Srini's leadership as District Governor 2011-2012, we present this to Mr. Srinivas Sayanidhi. Oh.